parliamentary committee, we have listened to Kenyans through that robust public engagement as stipulated by our constitution in the form of public participation. And we take this opportunity to tell the country that we have listened to you. We have heard you. And the committee has briefed the parliamentary group on the proposed changes that they have proposed to the finance bill of 2024-2025 that capture many of the issues that were raised by stakeholders during the public participation. And we have been able to engage on all those and agreed with the executive under the able leadership of His Excellency the President. I will now invite our chair, the very able chair of our Finance and National Planning Committee, the member for Molo, constituency in Akuru County, the Honorable Kuri Akimani, to take us through the brief of what has been agreed on, on the changes proposed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leader of Majority, Your Excellency the President, and all Kenyans watching us this morning. When we started the public participation in Finance Bill of 2024, we did make a promise that that public participation would not be an exercise in futility. We have listened to the view of Kenyans, and we are all in agreement that there are two things that we must do. One of them is that we need to protect Kenyans from increased cost of living, and therefore the proposed 16% VAT on bread has been dropped. <laughs> to support, again, on uh, reducing the cost of living, we are doing something about uh, vegetable oil so that we do not make it expensive for Kenyans. Transfer of mobile services is a key concern to many Kenyans. And therefore, again, we have proposed that we do not have any increase on taxation or mobile phone transfer. We have seen uh, in the recent past the, the proposals that you've made on Saturday deductions on SHIF and housing levy has added a loan, on especially on salaried Kenyans. And therefore, we have proposed that those Saturday deductions now be allowable to pay, so they will not pay an additional pay on those. We all agree that environment conservation is a key concern. The fact that you've had a drought and a few months of floods and our drainage clogs, we have agreed that we need to make a good decision about how to protect our environment. And that is what the wisdom on the introduction of eco levy. However, imposing this on locally manufactured goods would again increase the cost of those locally manufactured goods in the country and stand a risk of making them not competitive in the East African market and globally. Therefore, this eco levy will only be chargeable to imported finished products. And therefore, all locally manufactured items, and especially including diapers and sanitary towels, will not be subject to eco levy. We must make sure that we become a manufacturing country and not a trading country. And therefore, the imposition of this only on imported finished products makes our locally manufactured products more marketable to the, uh, not just reducing the price, but also making them affordable uh, to even export. On the VAT threshold, we, pro we have proposed in our amended report to increase that VAT threshold from 5 million shillings to 8 million shillings. Therefore, small and medium, term, uh, small and medium enterprises that have turnover of less than 8 million shillings do not therefore have to register for VAT. On ETIMS, we have had uh, farmers, avocado farmers, being asked to, pro to give uh, ETIMS receipts. We've had mamambogas who do their supplies to hotels being asked to register for items. We have proposed that this, these people be given exemption on items registration, and, they, uh, and, and especially for those farmers and those small businesses that have a turnover of below one million shillings. We have had the conversation about eggs and onions and potatoes. So what you've done to protect our poultry farmers our potato farmers in Nyandarwa and Molo, and protect our onion farmers. We have uh, proposed excise duty only on imported uh, table eggs, imported onions, and imported potatoes. This makes our, our, our onions, our eggs, 
and our potatoes more marketable to us and the region. To support the fight against illicit brews in the country, we have proposed a change in, in excise duty to changing it from a, a volume to, uh, to alcohol content. Therefore, those, malf uh, uh, those alcohol manufacturers that are producing alcohol of very high content will now be required to pay higher duty uh, because based on the alcohol content and those uh, making alcohol of lower content now will pay less uh, duty. To support our pension contributions, because one day we'll all retire, we are now increasing the amount of uh, uh, taxable pensions from, uh, we are now increasing the amount allowable for tax exemption for pension contributions from 20,000 shillings to 30,000 shillings. So this is a big win for our pensioners. So we are moving our pension schemes to exempt, exempt, exempt. It is exempt at contribution and exempt when you receive uh, your, your, your your pension from 20,000 to 30,000. Yes, a month, per month. It's important to say this per month. Uh, we have also been appraised of the money that is allocated for junior secondary school to hire all the intern teachers into permanent and pensionable uh, terms. And, and the number there is actually 46,000 shillings, uh, 46,000 junior secondary school teachers, in addition to recruit an, an additional 20,000. Your Excellency, we are, we are very happy that the proposals that were brought to the National Assembly and the ones that we are proposing to the House are two amended documents. Because, again, I repeat, the, ex, the, the, the exercise we did on public participation was not an exercise in futility. On motor vehicle tax, in as much as we agree that there is need to have money allocated to maintain our roads, and those people that are using our road more and causing tea anywhere on our roads to contribute more to us fixing those roads. We have agreed that the motor vehicle tax cannot be amended through an income tax act and, and also pegging it on insurance would make, would cripple the, the, the insurance business and make it very difficult, especially for those Kenyans who take that part of insurance and therefore that proposal has been dropped. Oh yes, sugar transportation. Yes, uh, in addition, there was a concern about transportation of sugar uh, from the milling factory uh, uh, to, to, to the farms. And therefore, uh, to, to, to the sugar cane, sorry, we have listened to the concerns about the, the transfer of sugar, uh, sugar cane from the farms to the milling factory. And people are asking, why sugar cane? And why not coffee? And why not tea? Sugar cane is very bulk. And therefore, the largest cost in the processing of sugarcane is actually on transportation, unlike most other crops. And that is why we have recommended to remove VAT on transportation of, 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 of sugarcane from the farms to the milling factories. It, for the mobile phone, I, I did mention that, that mobile phone transfer services uh, has been, uh, uh, we have not increased that, it still retains at 15%. The concern about foreign, foreign, foreign exchange um, um, transactions, the concern about transferring banks, that the status quo remain, no additional taxes have been increased on that particular sector. Thank you, Chairman Kuria. Members of the press, I think as you have heard from the changes that have been made to the proposals in the finance bill which will be tabled this afternoon in the National Assembly, I think it's important to mention to members of the public, including the public-spirited Kenyans who had intended to occupy Parliament, that there is absolutely no debate today, it's just the tabling of the report. Debate shall begin tomorrow morning, the whole of tomorrow, and continues to Thursday and will allow time over the weekend for uh, possible amendments from other members of uh, parliament. You may have realized from the amendments that we have done, there are a number of things that we intend to achieve. Besides the raising of revenue, is also one to ensure that Kenyans have more disposable income. You will notice from the changes that will be proposed by the chair in the report that you table this afternoon, we are devoting more money back into pe people's pockets, especially the employed Kenyans who have been contributing to the housing levy. The housing levy has been proposed together with the Social Health Insurance Fund, the National Social Security Fund, and now the housing levy to be tax deductible. And that will ensure 
that uh, what will be subjected to pay as you earn will be an amount less than what was there before, and therefore more disposable income will be going to many employed Kenyans. The second thing that we intend to do is to encourage savings and investments in our country uh, through the proposals that the Chair has stipulated in terms of pensions, the allow allowable deductions that have been increased for pensions uh, contributions. There's also an allowable deduction on post-retirement medical schemes to ensure that people start saving for their post-retirement and those post-retirement savings or contributions into a medical scheme to cater for your medical care after retirement will be tax deductible and therefore tax free. Uh, the other uh, I, uh, policy proposal in this finance bill is the protection of our local and manufacturing, uh, local manufacturing industries and our farmers. We as a country have made huge investments uh, with our farming uh, communities and therefore we we are intentional on protecting those farmers. That is why you hear the proposals to uh, uh, levy excise duty on imported potatoes, imported table eggs and uh, onions, and um, also the imposition of eco tax or eco levy on imported finished products. And I think as uh, the chair has emphasized, it is imported finished products because when the chair and the Finance Committee listened to stakeholders, especially the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. A very good case was made for protection of the local manufacturing industry. Therefore, to protect our local manufacturing industry and create jobs within our economy, we are therefore levying those levies on imported finished products, right from the border borders, the motorcycles, to sanitary towers that are imported, and uh, diapers, and all that. Therefore, I think we'll close it at that, unless, Your Excellency, you have something more to add. Okay. On the transport side, on border borders, there has been a concern about introduction of excess duty on motorcycles. Again, the decision that we made last year to incentivize local assembly of motorcycles have seen a lot of uh, institutions set, settle, uh, set up local assembly of motorcycles here in Kenya. There is no reason why we must import a complete finished motorcycle from China. So we are putting excess duty on the one that is imported. But the ones that are made here locally, those are exempted. And it's also important to mention, to protect the vulnerable and those people at the bottom of the pyramid, the eco levy on tires has been exempted on motorcycles, on bicycles, and on wheelchairs, so that those uh, people doing that business around the border, border sector will not, and, and even wheelbarrows, <laughs> so that we don't increase. So there is no worry, there is not going to be increase in the price of wheelbarrow, or motorcycles, or, or, or tuk-tuks, or bicycles. Thank you very much. All mkokoten. Asanteni, there is lunch. Karibuni lunch. <laughs>